People be so quick to and put money into dumb stuff that doesn't actually put anything in, back into them. Mm-hmm. Things that don't push them forward. Uh huh. Yeah, absolutely. And like people like to spend extra on that thing. Like people will buy Jordans for 300, 400. I don't know. None of the boys I know personally be buying crazy shoes like that. That's OD money. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Walks to Wolf podcast. If you're tuning in on YouTube or any of the podcast directories, make sure to do yourself one teeny tiny little favor. Make sure to give us a follow because I don't want you to miss out on any of the amazing episodes I got coming out this year. Without further ado, me and Darren are back with another collab to talk more junk. Yeah. Talk more junk. Talk so more in today's junk. episode, we're going to be talking. I was at Quantum Leap Summit and um, I had a bunch of people that were supposed to go with me. <laughs> and I ended up going by myself. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do, man. You got to do what you got to do. And some people had some valid excuses. Other people had invalid excuses. <laughs> But excuses are excuses nevertheless, so whether the excuse is valid or invalid, it's still an excuse. I don't care what no one got to say, including Darren. Um, not that Darren was supposed to go or anything. It's just, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure. You, you already said it. And you already looked at, uh, I, I you already looked at me. No, 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 I don't no, know, no. Though, but I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Like John says, the walk to wealth is different for others than for some. He said something like that. I did not say anything like that, bro. Yes, do yes. not take Darren's quotes if you can't state the episode. Uh, the episode is every episode, known to man. Okay. Anyways, but <laughs> back to what we we're saying. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about why are some people so quick to throw money at dumb stuff and gamble mm-hmm. and so slow to put money into themselves when it's time to invest in themselves? So, man, I'll... Uh, so, a quick little backstory. All right, I was supposed to go to QL Summit. It was supposed to, we were supposed to go four of us in total. And I've been talking about this since maybe, what, January? Nah, before that, man. Before January? Since that's it? might have been like December. Oh, when you first yeah. mentioned it to me. For a while, yeah, for a while now. And the whole plan to go to a little guy's trip, go to Austin, take over, right? You all learn from Gary Keller. It was going to be all y'all first time, so y'all wouldn't get the scholarship, the coaching, whatever. And so it's pretty much a no-brainer. Like, day with a billionaire, right? Then you also get to freaking, you know, day with a billionaire, you get freaking six sessions of free coaching afterward, and then $10,000 in scholarship money for you to put towards your business, your tuition, or anything, right? Not anything, but anything related to your business, yeah. right? 10K, you can do a whole lot. 10K helped me go to, like, five conferences and freaking get to Marriott Platinum status. So you can do a lot with 10K, <laughs> Right, yeah. and so from there, uh, one by one, people started trickling down. And so one of my boys, he ended up having to back out last minute. Another one of my boys, he he ghosted me. <laughs> I still have yet to hear from him. He asked me the other day about my event, and that was it. And didn't even go. And then, <laughs> and then I asked about the event, and didn't even go. <laughs> And then, so he's been ghosting me, so I haven't talked to him a little bit. But um, the topic of today isn't to talk junk about them and sub them, because that's not what we're here. But um, <laughs> the topic is, I just started thinking, like, you know, people want to be rich, right? People want to be successful. People want to do a lot of things. And yet, when it's time to invest in themselves, people aren't willing to figure it out. And... I think the topic really is today is like resourcefulness. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people say they don't have resources. Cool. Are you resourceful though? Like if you don't have resources, what can you do? How can you get the resources? Who has the resources? Because if the money is not in your pockets, it's in somebody else's. And so it's like, how can you figure out a way to be resourceful? Okay, tickets five hundred bucks, flight another five hundred bucks. bucks. Hotel, we're spending it, let's say 500 bucks, 1500 bucks all in. Now, to most people, that's a lot of money, right? Especially at this age. But it's like, all right, well, credit limits. Man, I'm not <laughs> saying that I lied on my credit card uh, applications, but the income that I stated was very much future projecting. I, I was projecting my future income that I was going to make <laughs> and, and not the current at the time because I had high hopes for myself. Yeah. And like, Man, I've been wanting to max out car. Not, I mean, we're not giving any personal finance advice. This is just me and Darren's opinion on what we think about what we, we've we done, right? And this is not advice to anyone. We're just sharing our open thoughts. Yeah. But, um, 
Man, the amount of cards that I got currently maxed out, bro, to try to keep me afloat right now. And not saying you gotta go max out cards to be an entrepreneur, but like, you have to invest in yourself at some point. And so it's like, Fact. if you're not, like, how do you expect anyone else to like invest in you? Yeah. Yeah, my fault. I've been talking this whole time. So like, like what's your thoughts? Like, a lot of people like, I don't know, I don't know what it is. Like, like a lot of people like, especially Aries, they're like scared to invest in anything. Um, Majority of the time, like, if you try to convince somebody to do something, like, like that, that's going to impact their life and help them do something better, it's always, like, you got to, like, really, like, get in there and try to convince them, like, that's not something I, I could just do. Like, I mean, like, if you want to do it, like, I'm going to tell you how to do it, what to do, and, and everything. But, like, a lot of people my age, they rather, like, just not, like, they're fine, like, being where they're at. And, but, but... Like, like we're gonna get into later, they'll they'll be quick to gamble. Like, yeah, so real like, quick. <laughs> I called Darren on the way back from my, my trip from Austin. It was like what, like, all right, no, we can talk. We're texting, or I don't know. It might have been a text. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was text. text. It was late. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, yo, like people be so quick to try and hit a parlay. <laughs> and for anyone who doesn't bet or gamble, a parlay. I don't even know what it means. Do you know what's what's a parlay? Because parla- I never bet parlay before. Parlay really is just like it's. If it's like a fifteen leg like parlay, like something uh, yeah, like that. Yeah, simple words, bro. It, basically, words. it's like a combination of bets into one bet. So like, like if I said Aaron Judge to to uh, hit a home run and Juan Soto to hit a home run, that's technically a parlay. That's like a okay. like a, a bet combined. Yeah. So instead of just placing one individual bet, you're placing yeah. like multiple, multiple bets. Yeah. So and if your odds all are the better. bets hit, yeah, you'll get more money, money than if you just hit one yeah. all of them individually. Yeah. Because as you as you add more more uh, bets to your bet. The odds of it happening get worse, so the more money you'll make if it actually does happen. Oh, okay. That's what a parlay is. Okay, that makes sense. So, a lot of people be so quick to hit parlays, right? They're trying to hit parlays. Like, yo, bro. Yo. Yo, I got this parlay, I, I, I bro. Got, I got this I got this seven-leg lock parlay. Bro, and it's going to hit, bro. It's going to hit. I promise you, bro. I mean, it's... I've been keeping up, but I seen them in the freaking in the, in the preseason, bro. Yeah. And dudes be so quick to put money on dumb stuff, bro. Dudes be so quick to put money on on freaking clothes, mm-hmm. on cars that they hey. don't need. What you, bro? What you got against against clothes, bro? I love clothes. I mean, <laughs> to each their own. I think because nah, I read a book called um, "I Will Teach You to Be Rich," mm-hmm. and in there it talks about like, you know, have. Your three spending categories yeah. when you spend frivolously. Mm-hmm. But if you're gonna do that, you gotta be super frugal in every other area. Gotcha. So like, I do believe like money is good to enjoy, bro. Like, mm-hmm. what good is it? Like for me, it just so happens I love to travel and I have to travel to all these business conferences. <laughs> yeah. So it's like my way of convincing myself that it's going to a good cause, mm-hmm. even though like <laughs> you know I should be staying home and saving my bread. Like, yeah. But it's like I get to knock both two birds with one stone. Right? <laughs> it's called a business trip and write it off, mm-hmm. right? But then also I get to travel and enjoy, it, and then I get the points, and then I get the Marriott lo- loyalty benefit. And so it's like I'm gonna hit it multiple birds with one stone. Yeah. But like people be so quick to. And put money into dumb stuff that doesn't actually put anything in, back into them mm-hmm. is what I'm getting to. Yeah. And I'm not saying that clothes are dumb or whatever's dumb. Uh-huh. Right? I'm saying that just like things that don't push them forward. Uh huh. Yeah, absolutely. And like people like to spend extra on that thing. Like people will buy Jordans for 300, 400 dead stock off a of head, off a of goat. You feel me? Yeah. I don't know. None of the boys that I know personally be buying crazy shoes like that that's od money like, yeah i know you know what people like they'll be spending bands and up none of my friends do it but like i do know some people that are like they'll drop like a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars on some like dude you're dropping like six hundred on some freaking kasumi pants bro yeah i got some <laughs> <laughs> but mine's are definitely not six hundred dollars i would never spend six hundred dollars on on any jeans just for them to be like from levi's and they just Put stamped in a Mary sign on them. And, yeah, and, and you and you uh and, and you paid a thousand dollars. They got you. But, but like, so why do you think that is that people don't invest in this, in themselves? Like, cause from what I've seen, I know a lot of your boys work, but mm-hmm. like, I haven't seen them at ne- at any networking event. I haven't seen any of them at any like conference. I don't know if they're into like any of that stuff. So mm-hmm. like, 
I also been like, do you ever try to convince them like, yo, bro, you gotta pull up to this, like, this would be good for you, bro. Um. So yes, I do try that. The and only time I ever got someone to actually pull up with me was to actually one. I think it was was it your fiftieth episode? It was one of one of those um events that you had like when you were first starting out on the podcast. Yeah, that's originally when I met like most of the people like like your circle mm-hmm. of people. Yeah. That's when I met them. Other than that, sometimes it's just that they work like different different hours, oh, but yeah. the other times like I don't know. They just there's like nah, bro. No, I'm not trying to come. I'm like, all right, bro, whatever. So, like, do they be clowning you for that? Like, nah. Well, sometimes, well, if it's about real estate, yeah, don't talk <laughs> about that. But when it's about, like, networking events or going somewhere and meeting people, nah, not really. All right. So, like, why do you think, like, that is, like, do you ever try to, like, to, like, go back and forth with them to see, like, with a reason why for not coming? Or are you just like, I right, don't want to come, that's, that's on them? I, I don't really go back and forth with them because, like, the one thing I understand about them is they they're on a different path than me. Like, like I the way I think is just different than than they think. Like they got like actual jobs and stuff. I'm thinking more of how could I, how could I like get more money and like spend less time working. Like, I think that's what everybody wants to do at the end of the day. But yeah. like, they're they're currently they're not focused on that. So I think that that's really like why I don't try to convince them all the time. I think a lot of people don't understand, like, networking, like, you need networking and everything, regardless of whether you're corporate, right, W-2, or you're working at a job mm-hmm. that, like, for example, like, a restaurant that's still W-2, but, like, not, you know, as white-collar, right, like, a blue-collar mm-hmm. job, whether you're in the trades, whether you have your own business, like, networking makes the world go round. A lot of people also don't realize, like, I've seen this one statistic, and this is back in high school, so I, I wish I could quote the source, but long story short... <laughs> It was pretty much saying how only a small percentage, like a quarter of the jobs that are available um, are shown on the actual, like, public sources, like Indeed and stuff like that. Yeah. And how, like, the rest of the jobs are primarily because you know somebody. Mm -hmm. And the numbers may vary, right? Do your own research, whatever. Mm -hmm. But pretty much what it was saying was that most of the jobs, the majority of the jobs that people have are because they knew someone or knew of someone, someone. that knew someone. Yeah. Right, or someone like, <laughs> like some second or third level connection. Uh-huh. Right? And a lot of people don't realize like you don't have to be an entrepreneur to go to network events. Like a lot of the ones yeah. I throw, there are people there who are working a job and mm-hmm. gladly are going to work a job until exactly, they retire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like there's some people in there that are like us and they're where young entrepreneurs hustling. There's people that are, you know, in their mid to late 30s and 40s and they're business owners as well mixing jobs so it's like I have people from all over mm-hmm. and I think it's been hard cause like I'm trying to, I'm trying to help open the door for and kind of like bridge that gap yeah but like there's so many like limiting beliefs people have and it's like bro it's gonna get me so tight mm-hmm. especially for like a networking event bro like it's they're paying let's go anywhere from 20 to 60 bucks for a networking event yeah usually yeah and it's like okay yeah, that is a lot of money, mm-hmm. depending on who you ask. But at the same time, <laughs> if you go out and eat at a restaurant, you're spending that. Same you're spending thing. twenty to yeah. th- twenty to thirty. If you're just you, you're spending at least twenty to thirty bucks mm-hmm. on just food alone. And if you grab a drink, you're spending somewhere between twenty five and forty bucks. Yep. On your own. Mm-hmm. If you go out to eat at a restaurant, a decent restaurant, right? And like when it comes to you can just do that at a networking event, yeah. or at like a, some person type of personal development event or business event. And at the very least, even if they're not specifically doing what you're doing, you're talking to successful people. Yeah. And success leaves clues. So, like, you would assume, like, yo, I got this good event. It's going to be a whole bunch of, like, dope people, a whole bunch of people who are getting money. Mm-hmm. It's like, you want to get money, right? Yeah. Why not hang around people who really get money for yeah. real? Mm-hmm. Who really invest in for real? Who really mm-hmm. building wealth for real? Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't ever add up to me, bro. And it's like... I just don't think a lot of people... Actually, I do know not a lot of people do think like that. Um, I, I don't know if it's just, like, people my age or our age that do that, but, like, most of the people that I see at, like, your events, like, they're, like, they're, like, 27 and, and up, right? Yeah, like, they're, like, they're, 20s, like, like, late 20s, like, mid-30s. Yeah, most people realize, like, way too late that, um, that you should be networking, like, in your early 20s, like, meeting, like, as many people as you can so that when you get older, you, like... You have a person for this and you have a person for that. Or if you, like, in the future, if you're looking to start your own business, like, I know one of my friends, he probably, I think he wants to be a mechanic. Um, and he doesn't know that, like, 
if you come out to the event, these events, all these people got cars. Mm -hmm. Some at one, one point or another, somebody's gonna need their car to be fixed, or they're gonna need it, or they're gonna have a problem with their car, and they're gonna they need someone to go to. Why not that person be you? That's why. That's why a lot of the times I do go to like John's networking events because even though John does know a lot of realtors and uh, they'll, they'll come to his event, like you never know who you'll meet and if you can build a connection like with somebody and have them like remember you, like your your impact is gonna be great. Remind me, how, how did you meet Jito again? Was it at one of my events or not? Uh, it was in the office. I started talking to him at one of your events. Yeah. Mm. So. Mm -hmm. Well, freaking. People don't understand, bro. Like, you'll never know who you meet when you come to one of these events. So let me ask you, because you're always someone, at least in high school, like, you see him a lot. I used to, I mean, we were in the same grade, so we mm -hmm. ain't hang out. We always seem a little bit more, more reserved. Like, you was with your boys, but mm -hmm. outside of that, like, you wasn't really <laughs> talking much to other people. I, I was the same way, not gonna lie. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> I was OD social with my people, and then to other people, it's like, uh, and even more so now, like right, mm -hmm. now, like nowadays, I'll talk your head off if I <laughs> if I rock with you. Yeah, but that's like, a fact. If, if I don't know you, like I go to networking events, it's like mm -hmm. I'll meet like maybe two, maybe three people, mm -hmm. and that's a good event for me because mm -hmm. I'm not trying to shake everybody here in person. I'm just trying to make some solid connections, connections. Mm -hmm. and see who I align with and go based off my like where I feel God pulling me mm -hmm. and like my intuition. Yeah, and then like usually. I'm spot on. Mm -hmm. You, nah, I'm <laughs> spot on, bro. I don't miss. Uh -huh. um, but like for you, what was it like getting into like networking events and like this like more so like personal development side of things where like you gotta mm -hmm. invest in yourself to grow. You gotta pay for stuff mm -hmm. for you to get better. Mm -hmm. like, what was it like? And uh, let's say to to like in person events in particular. Mm -hmm. um, that's mainly the topics. Like when it comes to like investing in yourself and going to like in person events event. and stuff uh -huh. like that. What was it like? Do you remember your first one? My first one was your. Your the hundred episode? Yeah, it might have been a hundred episode or episode before that. Um, whenever you had that little like, in live in person interview the first time, that's that was my first. Oh, like, the first first one when it was yeah. like ten of us, like yeah. fifteen of us. Uh huh. Oh, that was, that was December twenty twenty two. Yeah, that was my first. Damn, like, that was networking a minute ago, bro. Yeah, that was my first networking event Damn. kind of thing, and that's where I, like I said, I met like I met Brandon. Um, Brandon Godoris. He's like he's he teaches public speaking. I want to do one of his public speaking classes soon. Um, but like, that's, that's something like, like John said, like I'm reserved. I'm a real reserved person. Like I don't, I don't really talk to many people like that's outside of my circle. So it's more of me trying to just get out, your comfort zone? Get out my comfort zone. Yeah. And, and you know, yeah. Learn how so, to so what was it people. like going to that first event, bro? And then the second question to follow up with that, bro, mm -hmm. like, why do you keep going back to more? So, um, like, what was it like going to that first one? Like leading up to it? Like. Mm -hmm. You're like, what was your thought process? Like, man, this is weird. Like, I mean, uh, John, you my boy, so I guess I'll pop out. Like, yeah. what, what was you thinking? Yeah. So it was that, and also I asked my friend Sakoy if he wanted to come, and he was like, sure. So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'm, I'm down to go. Um, and so when I first got there, I was nervous, so because I didn't know anybody. Um, this is a whole new group of people. Mm -hmm. I just got into real estate, so you know, I didn't know many people at the time. So I walked in there. I was nervous. I was like, uh, who do I talk to? What do I do? 